Welcome to Tech Talks. This is where we try to navigate life by styling our minds one candid conversation at a time. I'm Jilly. My name's Dave. You can now listen to us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, or wherever you get your podcasts from. May manok na tumilao. Thanks for listening. Hi guys! Welcome to the fourth episode of TikToks. And today, pag-uusapan namin ang love languages. The five love languages. What are those? Ano yung importance? Mahalaga ba yun? And what will happen if we do not know our love language? But before that, of course, pag-uusapan muna namin ni Ate Julie paano ba kami nag-e-express ng love namin? In general to ha, not only in romantic, but in friends, in colleagues, in family. So yun, Ate Jilly, how do you express yeah. your love to someone? Yes, may naaalala ka. Yes, yeah. <laughs> hindi. Iniisip ko yung isasagot eh. So, when it comes to expressing our feelings towards others, it can it can be in so many different ways eh, diba? Like, for example, wedding random messages, mga ngamusta ka, or you're the type of person na gives your friends random hugs, random notes, so yung mga ganun na, yung mga sweet. Or you're the type of person na you're going to buy something for this specific um, person. Ganun. Pero when it comes to me, um, I like sending people messages, ran- random messages na hindi nila in expect Like, in the middle of the day, pag naalala ko sila, each a chat ko Mm-mm. sila or magsasend ako ng message. Um, just wanted to ask how they're doing. And then, kapag ikaw naman yung type of person na almost every day kasama ko, ano ba? I, wala. I don't really express it in a way na malalaman mo, but know that I appreciate your presence. Ayun. Ay, taray. Ano ba? Very <laughs> naman pala, yan. Very, uh, parang, very subtle. Ano, parang ano ka, words of affirmation based sa sinabi mo. Two words, since you're a writer as well. And then, parang may pagka-quality time din, yung part na sinabi mo na pagkasama mo yung tao, you just appreciate their presence. Yeah. Well, um, ako naman, personally, how do I express? Obvious naman, nakapakadaldal ko. So, words of affirmation. Um, parang, mahilig ako mag-reassure ng tao, um, if they have problem, before I solve their issue or before I think logically how to solve their problem, ina, ano, ina, tawag doon, pinapacify ko muna, ina-acknowledge ko uh, yung empathy for me, it's very important. So, yun, words of affirmation ako. Eh. Um, I, write, I, I like writing mga letters din, yung... Basta yung parang random chats kagaya mo, tsaka yung susulatan mo ng mga nakaramdam. Dun. Tapos, apart from words of affirmation, feeling ko yun yung top one. Quality time. Parang gusto ko laging ginagawan ko ng paraan para mamit ko yung tao. Um, kahit gano ka busy, gagawan ko ng paraan para magkaroon ng time na mag-catch up. Kahit sa friends, di ba tayo din ganyan. Yeah. Tapos, um, yung ayoko nung, ayoko nung, magkasama kayo tapos may nag-isang nag-phone kasi yeah. parang naroon moment together. So, it's a, nabasa ko kasi before, it's a sign of an quality time na love language kapag ganun ka sa kasama mo. Mm-mm. And, I treasure then every moment that I am with that person. Parang romantic naman tayo. <laughs> pero, <laughs> Hindi, parang, uh, go, go. Ano, oh, what's your question? It, pero, yung, for example, um, being on your phone, there are also it doesn't apply to it doesn't necessarily apply to everyone pero there are couples that i know or friends that i know na um kapag magkasama sila they are also comfortable being on their phones ah okay okay so, ano yun yung mga tao kasi na for example nagpi-play sila ng games or Uh-oh. what hindi yun yung parang me time nila big sabihin noon they they are so comfortable with one another na they don't mind the awkward silences. But for me kasi, like, 
ibang sitwasyon naman yung sa akin halimbawa nagde-dinner tayo sa labas yeah. or mm-hmm. nag-uusap tayo tapos nagfo-phone ka bang kumain I really hate that because my mom raised me na pag sa pagkain bawal Totoo. ka nagfo-phone kaya ayoko nagfo-phone so, mm-hmm. okay nagfo-phone ano ba yan ni-ruin yung mm-hmm. moment diba? so yun I, I, I would always prefer to leave with the moment ganun na akong tao na-enjoy ko yung bawat sandali na kasama Uh-oh. ko yung and then Good. meron ding um, I think based from personal experiences ha, it doesn't have to be the same love language to Mm-mm. a specific relationship like for example um i hope when it comes to friends or family they know na i'm the type of person na hindi talaga ako touchy and i'm not the huggy type na every everyone who knows me uh they know na when when you kind of like give me random hugs, ako yung tao na mag-squirm or mag- feel awkward or when there's someone who's crying, hindi ako yung tao na magaling mag-pacify, hindi ako yung, parang, when, for example, when someone's crying or nag-undergo ng sobrang malalang emotion, I am the worst person to be with kasi parang masasyak, masasyok ako, hindi ko alam kung ano yung gagawin ko and mao awkward and I'm not that type of person. So, yun, when it comes to friends, hindi ako yung physical touch, yung uh, love languages. Parang more on quality time. Yung acts of service, mga ganun. Mm-mm. Pero, when it comes to romantic relationships, ako yung type na more on words of affirmation and physical touch. So, ang point lang is, it doesn't have to be the same with with the relationships that you have. You can be clingy, this type of person na clingy to uh, this specific person, and then ikaw naman yung type na hindi huggy, hindi matouch when it comes to this group of people. So, mm-hmm. it varies, mm-hmm. di ba? Ikaw ba? Ganun din. Totoo. Ah, uh, natuwa ako dyan kasi hinahilight mo yan. Kasi parang ang, ang kakaniwang iniisip kasi natin is, I'm the type of person na words of affirmation ho. It applies sa lahat. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. sa ako na may boyfriend ka, sa best friend mo. Ako naman, same, uh, same din tayo ng scenario. Sa family, hindi ako malamig. <laughs> hindi ako same time. Hindi, hindi, hindi. Parang, yung halimbawa, ngayon, Father's Day, parang yung iba magluto. Parang ako hindi. Uh, iba yung way ng pag-express ko ng love. Like, for example, hindi ako magpapasaway sa inyo or hindi ako gagawa ng Uh-oh. bagay na masisira kayo. Yun, that's how I show my love. Pero, I don't usually tell them mga sweet na messages na yeah. mahal na mahal pa yo i'm not yes. like that but with with my mom it's with it's different with my mom kasi mm-hmm. i'm really close to my mom like maka mama, mama's girl ako kay mama yon ma ganun ako very clean and knowing na i have no siblings diba so yon uh-huh. tapos yung uh, romantic naman of course to those people who don't me i've never been in but I see myself as someone who needs constant reassurance from a partner. I mean, mm-hmm. feeling ko yun yung mabibigay ko sa guy. Well, depende din kasi. Parang may tao kasi na parang ane, ayaw niya ng masyadong ganun. So, mag adjust ka. Hindi ka, na yung, hindi ka parang magiging sobrang clingy kung ayaw naman niya. So, sa akin siguro depende sa kung ano yung gusto ni partner or nung, nung lalaki. Kung gusto niya ba yung physical touch, gusto niya yeah. ba yung ma words or action. So, depende yun pa din. You'll adjust naman when you get there, di ba? And speaking of this one, since we, we are discussing our ways how to express our love, um, ang question ko, kapag ito yung love language mo, like in our case, we are both words of affirmation. What kind of love language do we expect from the people around us? Ikaw, ikaw sige. Ano yung sa tingin mo? Bukod sa'yo, personally, parang in what specific lang love language na dapat ito yung match niya? Halimbawa, si words affirmation, dapat ito yung kanya, si quality time, ito. Ikaw, anong insights mo dun? There are times na, di ba, when it comes to love languages, for example nga, tayo yung type na minsan words of affirmation, yung the way we express. And mm-hmm. it's, I think it's a normal feeling na we would expect the same in return. Na kung mm-hmm. ganito tayong kind of person, um, it's normal to expect na ganito din yung matatanggap mo na someone would send you random messages and someone would um, buy you something na random. But we have to understand that. Kasi sa iba, 
hindi sila nakakapag-adjust eh. That's the problem. That's the problem of not knowing the or identifying the love languages of the people that you know. Na when you're expressing na ganitong type, na yung, for example, words of affirmation ka, and you express the same way, I you expect it to be the same way with your partner or your friends. And eh, hindi sila ganon. Eh, hindi mo alam na hindi ganon yung the way they express things. Parang dun na maglilid to misunderstanding, dun na maglilid sa petty stuff na tampuhan, ganyan. Actually, ano, tama yung sinabi mo, dun nagkakos ng misunderstanding kapag magkaiba kayo ng love language. Wait, bago tayo mag-continue, discuss muna yeah, natin yung yeah, five. Yeah, it, it identify Wait. muna natin yung... Identify muna natin para hindi tayo... Ano. So, di ba, we have five. Words of affirmation. So, ito yung mga tao na worthy whenever they feel something na hindi okay, very vocal sila. Yeah. Like, hindi, hindi ako okay, nainis ako, ganyan-ganyan. Tapos, sila rin yung ma-shower ng mga compliments and reassurance sa partner nila. ba? So, may nabasa ako before, ewan ko kung nabasa mo din yun, na yung mga tao na words of affirmation, yung love language. Ang downside nun is, you seek validation to the people around you. Parang, bago ka gumawa ng isang bagay, even if you know that what you're doing is right, parang, manghihingi ka ng praise or appreciation sa mga tao sa paligid mo. Yun yung common downside. Hindi ko naman sinasabing lahat, pero I would admit that happened to me before, nung younger era. Younger era talaga. Yung, yung nung nag-aaral ako, parang, may, may ginagawa akong something parang hindi mo man lang ako na-acknowledge, hindi mo man lang ako na-recognize. Kasi, yun, kabaga, siguro nature ng tao pag nagmahal na, yung ginagawa mo, nag expect ka na may gagawa rin nun sa'yo. Tapos yeah. kapag yung way, paano mo siya gawin, walang gumagawa nun sa'yo, parang ang sakit-sakit, di ba? Mm. Well, anyway, yun, balik tayo. So, identify, ta- identify natin. So, yun yung words of affirmation. Second is acts of service. Si acts of service naman, sila yung mga tao na through action. So, karamihan yan yung mga tao na mga man of few words, yung hindi sila masyadong palatex, palat chat yeah. or magsasabi na, I love you, ganyan, pero magugulat ka na lang, may pinadala silang something sa'yo, or di kaya pag mag-asawa na, mama ko kasi, yung mama ko, share ko lang, love language niya is acts of service. So, more of, she'll do the laundry for you, she'll prepare food for you. Massage. Um, o, oh, massage, ganyan. Basta yung, parang, may, sa action niya, ipinapakita na mahal ka niya. Tapos, yung receiving gifts, Hindi naman natin sinasabing sila yung mga super materialistic na tao, pero sila yung mga tao na they express their love kapag, yung yun nga, mahilig sila magregalo, mm-hmm. mag-surprise, magbili ng mga random things na pag naalala ka nila, or nagpunta sila sa mall, parang, uy, naalala ko si ano, bilan ko siya. Actually, yan yung list na love language ko kasi wala akong pera. <laughs> <laughs> Tapos, quality time, sila yung mga tao na they'll always find time para makita ka, makasama ka. They'll treasure every single moment na kasama ka nila. Yun nga, yung di sila nagpo-phone na ano, gusto nila, gusto nila focus na focus sila sa'yo kapag kasama mo sila in person. And physical touch. Obvious naman, self-explanatory. Sila yung mahilig yung makap, kumis, mag-hug, ganyan. So yun, um, for that one, may nabasa ako kasi laging sinasabi ng karamihan, parang ano, Pangit yung puro kasalita. Dapat may yeah. gawa ka. Di, mm-hmm. Yun yung laging nagiging connotation. Kaya, pag sinasabi kong words of affirmation ako, ako gusto ko sa lalaki yung ma-words, yung marami siyang sinasabing reassurance sa akin. Laging sagot sa akin, parang, um, puro salita lang, wala namang gawa. Pero, ang katiran ko naman kasi doon, word, ah, sorry, actions without words are misleading. ba Parang, Kapag may action na ginawa yung isang tao sa'yo, tas hindi niya kinocommunicate ano yung ibig sabihin niya dun sa kinikilos niya, pwede rin mag ng misunderstanding or na ano mo siya, na may misinterpret mo yung action niya. Kasi hindi niya ina-explain bakit niya ginawa yun or bakit hindi siya nag-text sa'yo, bakit Parang hindi kanya... Hindi, not, not in romantic, but... Okay. <laughs> Okay, ang defensive ko. Okay, <laughs> ang hirap kasi manghula na parang mixed signals. Diba? 
parang hindi mo, ano ba itong pinapakita mo? Charot. <laughs> Ayun, yun lang. Yun naman. O oh, sige, ikaw ba? How do you know someone else's love language? When it comes to identifying uh, the a person's love language naman, hindi yun agad-agad eh. Like, although there are instances na malalaman mo agad kung how a person is kapag nakilala mo siya. Like, for example, bagong bagong friends. And then, um, mafe-feel mo na she's the type of friend na sumasama lagi sa inyo pag-lunch or magtatanong kung anong dinner niyo for tonight. And then, um, malalaman mo din yung uh, love languages ng mga kakilala mo if you've known them for quite some time na. Kasi imposibleng hindi eh. Imposibleng hindi mo yun ma-identify. Like, we will always have that friend na or a partner na hindi makakatagal ng isang araw nang hindi ka nakakausap. Or Mm-mm. we would Mm-mm. always have that friend or kakilala na mag na when it comes to giving gifts, siya yung lalapitan mo kasi siya yung magaling doon. Or when it Mm-mm. comes to uh, quality time, gusto niya lahat kayo nandoon. Meron meron akong mga friends na ganoon eh na when it comes to have two gatherings na around the circle, gusto niya nandun lahat. It's a matter of analyzing then a person's actions. Kasi, Mm-mm. for example, ito, if hindi naman natin pinag-usapan, hindi mo siya maiisip eh. If hindi mo siya mm-hmm. um, sadya or consciously na i-identify, hindi mo siya malalaman. Pero, that's why we are talking about it right now. Uh, we advise for everyone to know the love languages ng mga taong nasa paligid nila para at the same time, makakatulong din if they want to foster the relationship, if gusto nilang tumagal. Kasi, para maiwasan din yung mga petty things like tampuhan and all that. Ang ganda, totoo yung sinabi mo na yun. Uh... Tama yung sinabi mong ganun. Hindi siya ma-identify like pagkakita mo dun sa tao. It, it's a process, you know? Yeah. Minsan nga, kahit ang tagal nyo pang magkakilala, hindi mo na monitor na, ay, shucks, ayaw niya pala ng ganito. Tapos nabanggit mm-hmm. mo kasi yung may tao na ayaw, ay, ano yun, yung hindi sila makakadlas ng isang araw na hindi nagkikita. Oh. Actually, yun malalaking adjustments talaga na sa friendship, sa relationship na tanggapin mo talaga yung tao kung hindi siya ganun. Mm-hmm. Tapos, parang, nasa sayo naman kasi yun eh. Kung baga, pakiramdaman mo kung yung ugali ba niya na yun, kaya mong tiisin na part yun ng struggles or nasa sacrifice na rin yung worth mo. Kasi mamaya, mm-hmm. kailang, na, na, ako, I, I don't know if I'm making any sense, pero parang, alam ba, ako personally, parang, gusto ko yung lagi akong ina-update. Not necessarily na magkachat every day. I understand yeah. we have our own schedules, but yeah. I want I want you to update me what's happening. Yan parang alimbawa magkikita tayo, tapos hindi matutuloy. Hindi naman ako magagalit na hindi matutuloy. Eh, na parang bati na tuloy. I'm not like that. I'm very understanding. Totoo yun. I'm very understanding. Yeah. Lalo pag busy yung friend ko. But I really really hate it if the person hindi ako he heads upan. Mang hindi matutusok. And then yung parang, sorry, busy ako. Like, hindi mo pwede ikatiran yan sa akin. Ganun yung love language ko. Parang, hindi mo pwede ikatiran sa akin na nakalimutan mo. Kasi, one minute lang mag-chat, five seconds lang, hindi ako pwede now. Busy ako. Yeah. Okay, I did it. So, yun. Yun yung ano ko. So, ikaw, parang, as a person, timbangin mo din talaga na yung love language niya na hindi siya pala text, is it okay with you? Yeah. Or baka naman... Sinasa- ito yung gusto kong sabihin eh. Parang, sabi kasi nila, if you love the person, titiisin mo lahat, titiisin mo yung Which ugali. Which is not. Mm-hmm. Totoo naman. Pero, kapag nasa sacrifice na yung personal happiness mo, and you know to yourself na, hey, I need this kind of love, but this person wasn't able to give that kind of love, think twice. Think twice. Kaya, sorry talaga, pero ako, I don't agree dun sa pagmahal mo lahat, titisin mo. Yeah. It's... Hindi ka magiging happy. I mean, hindi naman niya intention na hindi gawin yung gusto mo. But, 
meron kang paraan eh. Ito yung gusto ko, parang sa color yellow yung gusto ko, pero blue yung binibigay mo. Pero hindi ibig sabihin nun na hindi ka nagbibigay. Iba lang talaga tayo ng paraan, kaya hindi tayo nagkakaunawan. May, may ganong part na dapat yun yung timbangin mo. Take up, nagsasacrifice ako dito sa taong to, pero parang nasasakripisyo din yung happiness ko eh. Mm-hmm. Nasasakripisyo yung gusto kong mangyari. So that's one. And another thing that I want to share in any types of relationship, a lot of people are telling us that communication is the key to every kind, whatever kind of relationship. Ang usap kayo, pag-usapan nyo. But something I've read in Artidote, sabi dun, communication is not always the key. It's comprehension. Because you can communicate all the way you want. Sabi mo sa tao, ito yung gusto ko, ito. But if the person doesn't understand you or hindi kayo same ng wavelength, I mean, wavelength hindi sa matali nung atas uh, syunga, syunga siya. Hindi ganun. But <laughs> hindi, iba yung, <laughs> iba yung way niya ng pag sa mga bagay. Yeah. I swear, it, that won't work. That won't work. Realistic tayo. I know it's a harsh truth. But we want to burst, uh, we want to burst the bubble. At Nangyayari oh. talaga yun. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And the so, reason yun. din kung bakit natin ito pinag-uusapan is not because we want to point out na kailangan mong i-identify yung love languages uh, of the people around you and you have to adjust. It doesn't have to be that way. You have exactly. to understand the love languages of other people as well as most importantly, you have to understand what's yours also para alam mo kung ano yung masasatisfy ka and ano yung hindi, ano yung not enough, ano yung ano yung parang natitake na taken for granted ka ganun. Ayaw natin ng ganung feeling. Okay, and you've also mentioned na it's a matter of adjusting also to your partner or to your friend or to someone. And we want to highlight na for example, alam mo na yung love language mo, alam mo na yung love language ng partners mo, na identify mo na silang lahat. I just want to remind everyone na you don't have to make it as an excuse for you not be, not being able to exert effort. Like for example, na identify mo na you're not the type of person who randomly gives gifts or yung receiving gifts and all that such, yung acts of service ganyan, hindi ka ganon. Na identify mo na, for example, anniversary nyo. It doesn't have to be an excuse for you to not buy something or do something for your partner or for your friend just because ang love, lang- ang love language mo is not that, di ba? So, I totally just want- agree. I just yeah. want to remind everyone na we are identifying the love languages not for you to to use it as an excuse para hindi ka Uh-oh. mag-exert ng effort. Remember, adjustment mm-hmm. is key, okay? Communication is key. Comprehension is is the key. So, oo. Oo, totoo. So, bang ano, nakakatuwa kasi at least nakapag-discuss tayo ng something na um mas deep, deeper siya sa paano intindihin yung love language. Kasi yun yung nakikita kong common na misconception lagi ng tao eh. Na parang, ah, hindi kasi siya ganyan. So, wag na tayo mag-expect na magte-text siya palagi. Ang nangyayari kasi noon yung partner mo, sa sacrifice yung ano niya, sarili niyang happiness. Mm-hmm. Tapos, I think that's what leads then harsh truth again na bakit may nangangaliwa? Bakit may nang iiwan? Kahit sa friendship, di ba? Mm-hmm. Kasi, meron akong love na hinahanap na hindi mo kayang ibigay at hindi mo sinubukang ibigay sa akin yung ganong uri ng love. Kasi kung, halimbawa, yung, kunwari, for example, may boyfriend ka na hindi siya pala salita, pero nakita mo nag-e-effort siya to write letters, na, nakikita mo, nag, paunti-unti, nag-try siyang mag-reach out sa'yo through text or through call, kahit pa paano, makikita mo, ah, na-appreciate mo siya eh. Pero yun, totally na kagaya ng sabi mo, ginawa ng excuse yung love language. Ay, hindi ako physical touch. Kahit umiyak ka dyan, ganyan lang ako. Hindi ko ipapat yung ulo mo. Parang, diba? So, dapat ano din, hindi natin siya gawing excuse. Now, pag-uusapan natin ngayon, bakit talaga natin siya kailangang alamin? Anong mangyayari kapag hindi mo alam yung love languages? What are the repercussions? And what are the downfall pag hindi mo alam yung love languages ng tao? Ikaw ate, anong insight mo dun? Well, first, 
is it's a matter of getting your relationship into a deeper or higher level kapag alam mo yung love languages and you know how to adjust. And also for some people na on the brink of cutting the relationships na sila kasi nga hindi sila nagkakaintindihan, it, well, knowing your love languages and knowing how to adjust, it's a matter of saving the relationship if you know how to communicate yourself. And another advantage then also is for you to both be happier. Diba? Kasi kapag nasasatisfy nyo yung isa't isa with the things that you're doing and you're both content and happy with your state regardless of the love languages, Eddie, that's good. So, I think it's for a for building better relationships. Totoo. At saka para talaga maiwasan yung ano, misconception. Kasi, ewan ko parang, based sa mga naobserbahan ko talaga, parang ang daming nasisirang pagkakaibigan, uh, married life, or whatnot. Dahil hindi lang talaga sila magkasundo or hindi sila pareho. Kaya, I know this is cliche, but we really have to meet halfway with the person um mag adjust ka pero hindi yung todo adjust ka na parang hirap na hirap ka sa kalooban mo and one thing i realized then recently is if you are with the right person or yeah. if you are with the right set of people there are struggles there are mis- misunderstandings yan sa love language na hindi ako ganyan ganyan pero hindi siya yung parang hirap na hirap yung kalooban mo na todo todo adjust ka mm-hmm. kasi para sa akin Love isn't easy. We all know that. There's no perfect relationship. Diba? Wala tayo sa perfect world. But, love shouldn't be that hard. Yun yung parang sa akin. Hindi siya madali. Pero hindi rin siya sobrang hirap. Na parang, It doesn't ano, have to hirap, be a birthday. Exactly. So, yun. Yun yung, ano ko, where, where, where in fact na, pag yung love language, alam nyo, in the beginning of the relationship, I know this is, parang weird, but ako, I often ask my friends to take the love language exam eh. So, napakalaking tulong nun kasi kahit gusto mo nang mainis dun sa tao, bakit siya ganyan, bakit siya ganyan, but if you understand that that person is, ano, ito yung personality niya talaga, hindi siya ganun, hindi siya ganyan, and hindi ibig sabihin nun na wala siyang pakialam sa'yo. Mahuhold mo yung inis mo eh. Parang, ah, okay, I get it hindi pala talaga siya ganun ng tao. So, I have to accept it. Mga ganun. So, para sa akin, yun yung importante. Bakit kailangan alam mo yung love language? Yeah. What can you say about the scenario na, for example, um, nakilala mo siya as ganitong person. Ang pinakita niya sa'yo is, he's more on uh, words of affirmation, acts of service. Na the whole time, the, the reason why you got attached with that person is because of the love languages, that specific love languages that he's showing to you. And then, um, apparently, nung tumagal na kayo, nagbago. What can you say about that? Are you talking about platonic friendship? Or is it romantic ba? Or be both. Na okay. parang you just realize na something changed about his or her personality. Na before, hindi naman siya ganito. Before, hindi naman oh. ganito yung pinapakita niya. Which makes you question, is there something wrong with me? Or talagang nagbago lang talaga siya? Okay. Um, ako kasi, personally, my take on this. Okay, so, my take on that is, hindi ko muna siya agad kokomprontahin. Kasi one thing I've realized sa boyfriend man yan, girlfriend, kaibigan, katrabaho, kailangan may timing ka bago ka mag-compound palagi ng tao. Kasi, tama, nasabihin mo yung naramdaman mo, maging honest kayo, pero, lagi mong papakiramdaman if the person is ready to discuss. Kasi, what if pagod pala siya? What if napakadami niya palang problema sa buhay? What if sobrang pressured siya sa work, pressured, pressured siya sa school, na hindi niya lang sinasabi, tapos sumabay ka pa? So, for me, ang gagawin ko pag ganyan, i-confront ko siya, pero not straight away. Mag-iipon muna ako ng ilang senaryo na na katunayan na nagbago siya. Kasi ang hirap 
mag open up lang ganyan sa tao na alam mo parang dati hindi ka naman ganito ngayon ganyan ka na tatanungin kanya eh anong basehan mo eh kasi nung time na ganito hindi ka na ganito pwede kanyang sagutin eh parang yan lang nagbago na agad ako but if you have collections yes. kumbaga pwedeng pwede mo na siyang ikomponta kasi factual yung sinasabi mo kasi pwede kanyang pwede kanyang sagutin na baka naman ikaw lang nag-iisip niyan Diba? Yeah, or bakit nag-overthink ka lang? Wala naman nagbago sa akin eh. Ano yung nakakamdaman mo? Mm-hmm. You'll end up thinking na you're delusional. You're el- you're, you will end up thinking na you're just overthinking. Which is not good for your mental health. Kasi isipin mm-hmm. mo ako yung mali. Ayun na naman, self-sabotage ka na naman. Yeah. So for me, take good that good dyan. In whatever kind of relationship, before ka mag-open up sa taong mahal mo, kaibigan mo, i- punin mo muna yung mga napapansin mo para may pangsapo ka sa kanya. Kumbaga sa crime, bago ka magdemanda ng suspect, dapat matiba yung ebidensya mo. Hindi lang siya intuition. Hindi lang siya kutob. Dapat factual ka. Kasi ang hirap gawing ebidensya ng intuition. So yun, ganun yung gagawin ko. Ang take ko dun sa sinabi mo is Intayin ko yung sagot niya. And then when I- he say... confront mm, what, ano, if, ano, sorry. what if ang sabihin niya is, eh, hindi talaga ako ganun eh. Like, in-acknowledge niya well, na... Well, if that's... Na, yes. na, Nagbago siya. Oo. Oh, oh. well, that's, that's where you have to decide na, you know, if you're still going to stay within the relationship. Tapos kapag ano? in-acknowledge na niya na... He really, he or she really did change. Don't kana magde decide if you're still going. Oh, mm-hmm. oh. Tapos siguro ang gagawin ko yun. Iko confront ko siya. Iko confront ako siya na. O bakit iba yung pinakita mo sa akin? Yeah. Onset of our friendship mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. our relationship. So ginawa mo lang bayan para ikli. Oh, so that yeah. means that you're not true to yourself in the beginning. And isang reason yon para magalit or maines ako sa yon. Kasi na, parang na, na, minahal mo or pinakisamahan mo yung yung idea niya na hindi naman pala talaga siya ganun. Kumbaga fictional yung nagustuhan mo sa kanya. Ito o. Oh. Which is, huwag natin gawin yun. Kung ano, para sa akin kasi personally, I would rather, um, I would rather be rejected by the person that I like or may kakaibiganin akong baba, kahit babae yan, na hindi niya ako type, pero yun ako. Kesa yung nagustuhan niya ako or kinaibigan niya ako kasi akala niya ito kung tao pero hindi pala ako ganun in real life. Parang delusion lang niya. So, mas maganda maging honest na tayo. Onset pa lang ng relationship or friendship. Yeah. And another thing pala I want to share is pag kayong ta- nag-aaway kayo, it applies in romantic and friendship pa. Love, I'm, I'm not sure what kind of love language is this, pero may tao kasi na parang paggalit sila, they would prefer to solve that problem on their own. Parang, wag mo kong kausapin. Parang, hayaan mo ko mag-isa, nag-iisip ako. And then there are people naman na, no, pag-usapan natin to ngayon na. Pag-usapan to ngayon na, fix na natin. Isa yun sa dapat pag-aralan natin. Siya ba yung taong paggalit, gusto niya munang mag-isa? Or siya ba yung tao na gusto niya ngayon na kaagad? Kasi yan yung conflict eh. Parang, pinipilit mo yung tao na pag-usapan nyo na agad yung problema. Pinipilit mo yung tao na, na i-fix nyo na agad. Eh, hindi pa siya ready. So, lagi, be understanding. Give the person na time, space to reflect on their own, kung yun yung gusto nila. At the end of the day, we can say that we love the person if we respect them eh. Respect yeah. mo yung gusto nila. Ayaw nila, wag mong gawin. Gusto nila, gawin mo. Pero, like what we have said earlier, wag naman yung puntong ikaw na yung todo-todong nag adjust na hindi na, na, nawawala na yung true self mo. Yeah. So, yun lang. Yeah. So, that's it. Feeling ko na-cover na natin lahat ng mga dapat, not really lahat, pero the things that we can contribute to the conversation when it comes to love languages. And we do hope na itong episode na to is makatulong 
when it comes to our ruminations or pag nagre-reflect na tayo sa sarili natin and to our relationships. So, if you have any questions, comments, uh, you can just send us messages kahit saan, kahit personal DMs or you can just comment. I don't know, kahit saan. We're available on yeah. all podcast platforms. Social media pala. Yeah. Ah. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening until the end of this episode. We do hope you got something out of it. Don't forget to follow or subscribe. Thanks for supporting. Ha ha ha! Ta Tick tick tock! Tick 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 tock! Let's get scratching. <laughs>